Today I'm going to show you 21 diet tips and tricks that you can easily implement. Some of them will help you drastically reduce your calorie intake without you even noticing it. Let's start with the first tip and it's about your cooking oil. Most of you probably have a bottle of oil at home that you're using for cooking. The issue with pouring oil directly from the bottle is that you can easily add 5 to 10 grams in just a second, even with the smallest dispenser. While 7 grams might not seem like a lot, it's actually about 63 calories because oil is 99% fat and has 9 900 calories per 100 grams. A simple switch I recommend is using a spray can instead of a bottle. The dispenser on a spray can is much smaller, allowing you to add only about 1 gram of oil each time you spray. This gives you a much better portion control, significantly reducing the risk of unwillingly adding hundreds of calories. Let's talk about bread. This is a food item that many people avoid during a diet because it's relatively high in calories. However, if you cut open the bread and then remove the inner soft part, you can reduce its weight and and thus its calorie content by almost half. You still keep the chewy texture that we all love when eating a sandwich, but you can now add in more low calorie high protein stuff like deli meat or vegetables that can still enjoy the chewy texture. Let's talk about ketchup, the king of condiments. You might think it should be low in calories because it's basically made of tomatoes. However, because there is a ton of added sugar, regular ketchup has about 100 calories per 100 grams. But did you know that there is a zero sugar added version of this that tastes almost the same but only has 44 calories, that's more than a 50% reduction in calories with pretty much the same taste. Evaporated milk with 3% fat is something we commonly use in Germany as a coffee creamer. It's relatively sweet and has a similar taste to cream, but only has about 80 calories, which is a quarter of what you would get from regular heavy cream. But it's also the perfect substitute for any dish that calls for heavy cream like a curry. When the recipe calls for cream, just add evaporated milk and the result will be pretty much the same taste-wise, but you have a lot less calories. Try it out, it's really good. If you have the privilege to work from home, consider buying a walking pad and a height adjustable desk. I walk every morning on the treadmill for about an hour while doing easy work like reading emails or organizing my day while walking at a slow pace. So after the first hour of the day, I already have six to 7,000 steps in. Granulated sugar. Because this is a pure carbohydrate, it packs about 400 calories per 100 grams, which can quickly add up. Instead, try using a zero calorie sweetener. I recommend erythritol, sucralose, or a combination of the two, which is what I am currently using. These have a relatively similar taste to sugar, but with zero calories, which is especially great when you add them to foods that need to be sweet, like cakes or pancakes. Please buy yourself a food scale. I promise this will be a massive eye opener, especially when you are eating things that are very calorie dense, like peanut butter or cheese. You will realize how quickly calories can add up if you don't have proper portion control. The reverse weight trick. The next time you want to eat something that needs to be scooped out of a container, place the container on a scale, press the zero button, and now you can scoop out precisely how much you want. The scale will show the weight in negative that you can simply ignore. This simple but effective trick works with anything that needs to be scooped, like cream cheese, Greek yogurt, or tomato sauce. Tracking my macros was probably the most life-changing habit I implemented in terms of my overall health. I highly recommend doing this for at least three months. You will not only learn to make better food choices in your kitchen, but you will also learn how to eyeball calories on your plate, which again will help you a lot in restaurants or when you are invited to someone else's house to eat. Peanut butter is a widely popular food, especially in the United States. The thing with peanut butter is that it's really high in calories. A super small serving, which is 10 grams, already has 60 calories. But did you know that there is a similar food item called powdered peanuts? This is essentially the same thing, but a lot of the fat is removed, which makes it not only low in calories, but also high in protein. You just need to scoop out a serving, about 13 grams, and add the powder to a glass, then combine it with a splash of any liquid, like milk or as I do, water, and mix it. Keep doing that until you get to the desired consistency, and just like that, you have a creamy peanut butter. This is also 60 calories, but as you can see, it's about four times the amount. My cookbook that at this point contains over 200 low calorie high protein recipes that will help you lose weight and keep it off for the rest of your life without even thinking about being on a diet. Buy the book once and get all future recipe updates for free, the link is in the description. Next time you prepare yourself oats, whether overnight oats or regular oats, it doesn't really matter, try adding 200 grams of non-fat Greek yogurt. This has 20 grams of protein for just 120 calories, which is incredibly good for a dairy product. Add it to your oats and now you don't have to worry 
about adding any more protein and can focus more on flavoring stuff like cocoa powder or fruit. Combining a high calorie dipping sauce like guacamole with something very low in calories but with a mild flavor. The next time you make guacamole, add only half of the avocado to your bowl with the other ingredients and now add 0% fat cream cheese. This has incredible macros with only 60 calories and 10 grams of protein and will not only make the macros of the guacamole a lot better but won't change the flavor too much. So scoop out half the weight of the avocado, if the avo weighs 60 grams, add 30 grams of cream cheese, mix it and you have a great dip for any chicken dish, you need to try this out. You know exactly the craving for something sweet like chocolate after you have had lunch or dinner. Instead of eating chocolate however, try to drink a Diet Coke. More often than not it will kill your sweet cravings because of its sweetness and because Diet Coke has pretty much zero calories, you will save so many calories over time. For example, this small piece of chocolate weighs 40 grams, which is over 200 calories already, so give a Diet Coke a try, it will help you a lot. Always have a low calorie snack ready to grab in your fridge. I always have a small apple ready to eat. Not only are apples very nutritious, but they also have quite some fiber. One apple only has about 60 calories, but it is somehow super satiating and will get you over those small hungry moments until it's time to have an optional meal like dinner. Turning a lean cut of meat into filet mignon level tenderness. This is a top sirloin, which is a very lean cut of beef. The macros are quite good, however, because it's so lean, it can be quite tough to eat. So next time you make a leaner piece of meat, cut it first into slices about one centimeter or half an inch thick, then put it into a bowl, add cold water and massage the meat for about a minute. This is what a lot of Chinese restaurants do to tenderize their meat. And by the way, this rot color is not blood, it's called myoglobin, which gives the meat its color. After you have washed the meat, put it into a strainer and squeeze out all of the water and put the meat into a bowl and add one of the most underrated ingredients and it's baking soda. A very small amount goes a long way here. The baking soda will make the meat more alkaline, which will retain more moisture in the beef and makes it more tender and juicy at the same time. Let it marinate for 15 minutes and now you can simply stir fry it in the pan for about 2 minutes or so until it has a nice color. And this is how you can turn a lean and cheaper cut of meat into a super tender and juicy meal. Next time you make yourself a thick cheeseburger, prepare yourself a massive amount of raw vegetables as a side. I like to chop up fennel, a red bell pepper and a carrot with some salt and this massive amount of food is about 150 calories. So by doing this, you turn the cheeseburger with a small amount of food into a massive meal that allows you to still have a cheeseburger but you are still satiated with a relatively low amount of calories because of the massive amount of vegetables. Ground beef is probably something everyone eats once or twice a week. If you buy the regular one, you will most likely get one that has 20% fat and about 250 to 300 calories per 100 grams of meat. But there is ground beef that is called extra lean. It only has 5% fat which reduces the calories by half. You can see the much more red color of the meat on the right. That is how you can spot ground beef that has less fat and thus fewer calories and in my opinion it tastes pretty much the same. Chicken thigh instead of breast. Most people think that thighs have a lot worse macros than breast, which is true. However, if you remove the skin where most of the unnecessary fat is stored, you suddenly have almost the same macros as in the breast. After removing the skin, which weighs only 24 grams, you end up with only 119 calories with 16 grams of protein instead of the 203 calories with the skin. So you can eat more thighs during a diet, which a lot of people like more than breast if you remove the skin. I present you one of the most satiating foods that exist. Yes, that's right. On the satiety index, a boiled potato was ranked number one. It's even more satiating than eggs or beef. In my opinion, this is by far the most underrated food, not only during weight loss, but also when it comes down to a healthy diet overall. The macros are incredibly good, it's super satiating, and you just need to boil potatoes in salted water, and you have one of the best side dishes on the planet. Now that you have all of these tips, I will show you in this video how I personally implement these in a full day of eating 200 grams of protein. So click on this video and see you there.